Every single day, life gives us opportunities to commune outside of our comfort zones, and the more frequently we do, the more rapidly transformation takes place. For the longest time, most of my interactions with the world would set off these mini alarms in my body, especially socializing, because I would always feel like the odd one out or the one who didn't get the joke, and small talk was like sandpaper on skin. But it's been quite a few years beyond this growing edge, and my connections are one of the things that I thank God for every single day. And if there's any part of you that wants to show up with more ease in the world, I hope this video can can be an answer to your curious heart. Hello my sweet friends of the interwebs, it's really nice to be hanging out with you here and I am very passionate about this topic because my relationship to socializing really mirrored my relationship to myself and how trusting I was of the world. We're just gonna get right into it. I just have had so many immensely awkward moments in my life but in my you know early 20s i started to gain social skills and that is what i want to share with you today like how to be a part of the world and not shy away from having conversations with people from making new friends and from participating in this thing called life it is scary doing new things in this life and it is scary putting yourself out there especially when you aren't really practiced in it to hide yourself from the world and to say actually i'm really not good at socializing i'd rather just be alone is almost like a state of defeat and genuinely giving up and missing the point and the purpose of life like we are on this earth to be made more brave and to have a human experience and a lot of confident people weren't naturally born that way they go through things they were bullied and then they learn these tools and practice being brave so just know that if it feels really scary for you to go out in the world and start making friends and start a conversation then that's exactly what you're meant to be feeling like it's a growing edge and it's such an opportunity to face yourself at any stage in your life you can magnify really Really deep beautiful loving connections I really believe that and so let's get into some of my favorite tips <laughs> step one is to open up dialogue with that part of you that doubts questions and fears when you're going out when you're having a new conversation if you hear that little voice in your head that's just like why do you even think that you're good enough to be here your outfit sucks what you're saying doesn't make sense whatever the berating thoughts are have a regular open discourse with that low self-worth talk and just be like hey i see where you're coming from i can understand why you might be asking these questions considering the past history but i am a being of unconditional love and i am letting people love me now i am letting people love me and i want this because i can because i'm that girl <laughs> because i'm choosing to love myself because i'm worthy of this you know and just reaffirm rewrite that narrative with something positive i know this is really simple but it just really helps to remember that those thoughts in your head are not the truth and you're actually the controller and the ruler of your thoughts and of your mind so whenever that voice comes up it can be hard to shut it down but just talk to it it's it's not the objective truth of this moment that I am wrong or other or not supposed to be here. The truth is there is potential for loving connections all around me and that's what I'm breathing into. That's another thing that I like to do if I'm having anxiety in the moment is just to write out my thoughts on my notes app so that I can really see what's unfolding and not spiral into anxiety in my body. Along with this, I will say, seek the objective truth of the situation. If you don't have a poetic bone in your body, if you don't wanna write anything out, what is the objective truth in the moment? So you're sitting at a dinner table conversation with new people, the conversation is a little awkward in your head, you might be thinking, I'm so bad at this, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know why I came here. But if you seek the objective truth in that moment, you can think, I'm sitting here at this dinner table with new people. We're still getting to know each other. Lapses in dialogue are okay. And as much as I'm trying to get to know them and introduce myself accurately, so are they. And if this connection doesn't work out, it's also going to be okay. None of what's happening right now will affect the truth of my being. So I'm gonna show up and be myself and know that that's exactly what I came here to do. And there is no right 
and there is no wrong. It's essentially talking yourself off the ledge by viewing the objective information and not getting caught up in the stories in the mind. And I just wanted to take a moment to let you know that today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. They let you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. They can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your city. And to get started, you just fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then BetterHelp will match you with someone to help you. You'll be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours and you can schedule therapy sessions at any time that's convenient for you. If you feel like a therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with the click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. So join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life by clicking the link in the description box or visit betterhelp.com slash hitomi and clicking the link down below helps to support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And it's also important to remember that it takes time to build comfort and intimacy with people. If you've ever absorbed content online of like best friends, friend groups, sisterhood type stuff, even my content where you just see my friends and I all in cuddle puddles, it definitely took time to build that level of intimacy and understanding and knowing what my friends love languages are and what their triggers are and having had you know hard conversations at times with them, like all of that fed into that one singular moment that you're seeing online of me feeling so at home and so comfortable with my friends. And just remember that and try not to idealize you know, the peak of a friendship without realizing that it takes, it just takes time and shared experiences and to trust the pace of those things. There are different levels of intimacy that can be built over time. Sometimes it's this instant kinship that you feel with people, but it's not always instant. And so trust the pace of your connections. I find that I always gravitate to social settings where we are all being called to be the witness together. We're all being opened up or made more curious by the art that we're seeing or the speaker that we're listening to. It's just like this invitation to expand and know ourselves more deeply. And that is a place that I meet my friends all the time. It's like we have this philosophical girl gang. <laughs> like I mentioned, I used to be so terrible at small talk and it was my worst nightmare to be left alone in a room, in a space with someone new. Like if my friend introduced me to their friend and then quickly had to run away, I would instantly have anxiety, but because I'm genuinely curious about people and I learned that about myself, like I do genuinely want to get to know other kinds of people in this world as an archetype, as some sort of embodiment, as a character that I'm collecting in my mind, it has made it so much more fun and exciting to just actually want to get to know people. And I think this shift is really important, feeling obligated to talk to someone versus wanting to honor the present moment and get to know and be curious about who another person is like everyone has their own little universe of experiences and when you shift it from being like oh i have to go out in the world and socialize and put myself out there instead to being like i wonder what experience this person has that is completely unique to them what stories do they carry like i'm about to be entertained here if i ask the right question that is how i approach small talk now um and i used to really talk shit about it and just be like Ugh, i can't do small talk like i'm trying to get deep right away and it's like mm, sometimes you need to lay some groundwork down and there's nothing wrong with small talk, like it's actually just the preliminary stages of getting to know someone, but it's about asking the right questions. So if I'm going to a party or a group setting with a bunch of new people, I usually have some go-to questions ready so that when I'm left alone with someone or I'm meeting someone new, I'm not like scrambling to figure out what to say. My go-to questions differ depending on the environment that I'm in, but my main go-to is, how's your heart feeling? Or what is most true for you right now in this season of your life? Or interpret this how you will, but I'm really curious. Do you feel like you're in a life cycle right now or a death cycle? Or what was the highlight of your day today? Like give me a little inside scoop on your reality. Just something to genuinely get to know them and get a little like slice of what their life is like. And you can tell by these questions, I just wanna get a little view of their world through their eyes. But let's say you're really just meeting someone and you don't really have that much to build off of, use the environment around you. So like, 
hey, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, how, how did you get invited to this event? Or the sun was shining today and it was so nice. I just laid out in this field all day and I just feel so full. What was your day like? Did you get to feel some of that sun on you? Even though it sounds kind of like dorky, I love those kinds of questions. Or if I'm at like some kind of art gallery or art party, I'll ask, do you have an art practice or do you make any art? What did you think of the paintings that we saw? You know, just, it can be really simple and easy. And I think having a genuine enthusiasm to get to know someone else's perspective is what will take you there <laughs> to that authentic natural place versus any kind of obligatory question. And if you really don't wanna be in a social setting, then you can just be like, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit shy tonight. I'm feeling a little like awkward, but I'm here anyway because I wanted to see this performance. Um, how are you doing? You know, just like fully inviting all of yourself to be there. Having some simple one-liners is a great place to start. And if you have a good rapport with someone, but you want it to be a little bit deeper, you can ask something like, what's the most embarrassing thing that you did today? I did this on my last first date that I had in New York. I just wanna get into the nitty gritty without it being a whole like trauma dumping session. And I also asked them what their most toxic habit is, who they are in the now moment and the things that they're working on within themselves. I really like asking questions also that push you past a need to perform perfection or being put together. Like depending on the setting, it's really nice to just be like, what's actually going on with you? Like who, who are you when no one is watching? And I always create that safe space as well by being completely radically honest about what I'm experiencing too, whether that's like anxiety or let's say I had like, I binge ate that morning. I'd be like, yeah, I binge ate today. I don't feel great about it, but I'm showing up anyway and I'm, feeling good tonight, you know, just like genuinely bringing all of myself without any shame, that will create a safe space for other people to be vulnerable too, as well as having yes and energy. When someone brings something up to you or tells you some bizarre fact about themselves or their life or something that they did, instead of being like, whoa, that's crazy, and not adding anything to it, just be like, whoa, how did that feel, you know? ask a relevant follow-up question or relate it to an experience. The best kinds of people are the ones that you can say anything around them and they'll just roll with it and they'll be interested and curious about it. I know it's kind of a small thing, but it is like this subtle energy switch that can allow you to have really fun, easeful conversations with people. In fact, I think I have a little bit too much yes and energy to the point where one time I was at this Erica Badu concert and this girl and her friends, I was getting to know them and she was like, oh my gosh, that concert was so fun. I had to pee the whole time, but I was like holding it in so that I didn't miss a second of her show. And I was like, yeah, oh my God, I have such a small bladder. I have to pee all the time. She was like, right? And I was like, sometimes I just wish I could wear like an adult diaper or something so that I didn't have to get out of bed in the middle of night when I have to go pee. And then it got awkward. And I think that maybe she like thought I was serious, but I was joking. I was mostly joking. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely stayed up at night thinking about that, being like, why the fuck did I say I wanted to wear an adult diaper to this new girl and her friend? A lot of socializing is just having a, a little, even just the tiniest sliver of self-worth to know that who you are is okay and worthy of love. And whatever your experience is, you are valid and deserving of being met with kindness. Like the fear that comes up when you put yourself out in the world is the fear of rejection, of ostracization, of not being good enough, of having your fears confirmed. And so much of that simply stems from being nervous that you're not enough in some way, shape or form. But the more that you cultivate your own self-love practice and your own belief in yourself, the easier that it gets to let things go when they are cringy or awkward or connections don't work out or your partner breaks up with you those things don't affect the truth of your being as much and so you have to build up this kinship that you have with yourself you have to genuinely fuck with yourself in order to be unfuck with in this world and to feel brave enough to put your heart out there you have to know whatever happens in this relationship in this friendship I am a whole beautiful being with so much to give to the world and nothing is going to change that. So I can be brave, I can face rejection, I can be spiritually naked and let life touch me deeply 
and have this human experience that I'm meant to have. And a great way to build up this momentum and confidence is being so kind to yourself when you are alone, is treating yourself good even when no one is watching. And for me, I practice opposite action every single day. I don't always want to get up and go to yoga. I don't always even want to shower or brush my hair. But when I do these things and I regard myself as someone who is worthy of love and beauty and radiance, I emit that energy out. The love that I put into myself, it shines out and it's like a, a little currency. You know, I'm going to sprinkle some love dust on myself and suddenly I'm showing up as a being who's worthy of love because I proved that to myself this morning when I did a little face mask and I listened to some frequencies, whatever it is, do something kind for yourself every single day. And this will build up that belief system that you are worthy of it. When you really learn to be at home within yourself, you're not afraid of being perceived. But when I brush my hair and put on my jewelry, sometimes I'll put on a cute outfit. It makes me feel excited to flirt with life. And like, I don't mind if people approach me. I don't mind if people look at me because I feel like I'm open. I'm open to being received and I'm representing who I am in some way. Like my essence is coming through a little bit today. Also wearing a little bit of perfume or essential oil. This will make you feel a little bit like, okay, I can make a friend right now. If someone came up and said, hi, I'd be down for it. It just opens you up even just a little bit more to interacting with the world. There are artsy, mindful, kind, intelligent, beings all over the world with similar interests as you and once you start believing that and also expressing yourself in some of these ways you know like putting yourself out there as maybe an artist or someone who might be into yoga it's going to invite those kinds of people who see you as like oh a fellow person trying to evolve on this earth whatever you want to call it it's just like there are different ways to identify people who might be similar to you and you expressing yourself will help to attract those kinds of people and something that i love to do and that you can invite within new friendships is do you want to just land for a second and take a deep breath together that is such a nice invitation i love other people who embody this and just bringing people into a single moment even of pause like hey I'm just gonna take a deep breath. Do you wanna join me? Okay, deep breath together. Okay, I just feel like I had kind of a crazy day and then I took this train here and I just wanna welcome my whole body into this moment right now. How is your nervous system doing? This is a really great way to co-regulate with people and really be present and like drop into the moment in a real way versus just being all up in your head, carrying all the thoughts of your day and the chaos of public transport and just coming to someone all frazzled, just being like, okay, now I'm here, I'm here now with you. It's, it's really nice. Know that you are the main character in your story and the main character in every film, they have hero's journeys, they have insecurities, they have deep fears that they overcome. So just know if you're having a really bad friendship streak that you are just in that moment. You are maybe in your little death cycle, which is the inevitable part of life and just be like, damn, I'm really going through my character arc right now. <laughs> Look at me go and just think like, what would the main character do in this situation? Something that helps me to embody this energy is wearing whatever the fuck I want. Having a really good playlist where I'm just dancing and feeling on cloud nine. I have had really depressing days lately where I just am so exhausted and fatigued that I'm just sleeping the whole day, but then I'll go to yoga or I'll go to the gym and I'll put on my good playlist and 20 timelines will open up in my imagination where I remember who I am and all of my potential and I'm just imagining myself like doing these really cool scenarios in my head and I'm just like, oh yeah, this is what it feels like when I feel fully embodied and having a moment every single day where you feel some sort of that dream embodiment of your highest self, of your most joyful, loving self, like integrating that into every day will be really helpful for you in being the main character of your life. Like don't forget all of your dreams. Don't forget all of your potential. Even if you are the most depressed you've ever been, which I've genuinely been feeling the past few weeks, um, having a single moment where you remember what you enjoy doing in this world will help you to feel like, okay, life is worth living. I'm gonna move through this part of the plot and storyline and it's gonna be okay. But yeah, <laughs> those are some of my thoughts on 
making friends as an introvert. And these are just random labels and boxes that can help us understand our experience, but you also don't have to attach to them and just be like, I'm a shy person, I'm an awkward person. Like I'm gonna bring that into every space because it is fluctuating. It depends on the environment that you're in, the time of your cycle that you're in every single month. So um, there's no reason to even like glorify these labels very much at all. We all have different tendencies and yeah, just mirror the situations and moments that make you feel most alive and most confident and um, find yourself there. We are all so multidimensional. We have different aspects of our personality, different aesthetics that we might call upon throughout the month, and everything is so malleable. The information of what has happened in our lives can shift and be integrated and new passions can arise and there is just so much space for you to endlessly become and no matter where you are right now, it is so okay and I just really want to like spread that um, voice of unconditional acceptance upon you that nothing that you are could ever be bad or wrong, nothing that you can feel is bad or wrong. Maybe your intention can be, I am letting myself receive unconditional love in this season. I am opening myself up to be unconditionally loved. I'm here for this, I'm here for the contrast and how it is shining light on every aspect of my being. I want to be a room in which the light is fully shining and there is nothing to hide, you know? The light can touch every part of me, even the sorrow and the despair and the heartbreak, like that can exist, but I'm gonna shine light on it too. But I hope that you found some of these tips helpful. If you have any tips for socializing or finding and maintaining friendships, please leave them down below. And I just appreciate you so deeply for being here and breathing deep through it all. I will see you in a video soon, I hope. Bye.